broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. And HMSA, helping Hawaii's youth and their families stay healthy today, tomorrow, and for generations to come. HMSA, trusted for generations. Next on Hiki no, stories from across the island chain. The way I want to see life, I can make it in a video. A student with a long list of medical problems finds his passion behind the camera. Plus, students at Kapolei High School transfer a World War II exhibit from a battleship to their school library. Also, a middle school instructor uses butterflies to teach compassion. And you'll find out how a Kalaheo High School student does her best to deal with dyslexia. Learn about a Plantation Village tour guide who uses her own story to bring her tours to life. And find out how students learn to see by drawing indigenous Hawaiian plants. All on this episode of Hiki no, coming to you from Hawaii Preparatory Academy in Waimea on the island of Hawaii, home of the Kamakani. That's next on the nation's first statewide student news network, Hiki no. Can do! Hi, I'm Jordan Virtue from Hawaii Preparatory Academy in Waimea on Hawaii Island. In this episode, we'll be taking you on a tour of Waimea from the mountains to the sea. I'm standing in front of Buster Brown, the most prominent pu'u in Waimea. The five pu'us or hills of Waimea overlook and define the town, with Buster Brown being the largest and most distinct. Buster Brown's Hawaiian name is Hoku'ula, which translates as the Red Star. It was the site of a famous Hawaiian battle between the islands of Hawaii and Maui, and is one of the most important landmarks in Waimea town. Our first story takes us to Honolulu where students from Iolani School introduce us to a young filmmaker who, despite his many medical challenges, maintains a positive outlook on life. 17-year-old Mitro Kouchi dreams of a career in the film industry. However, before he can go off to college and pursue this dream, he must first undergo his eighth surgical procedure. If all goes well, it will be his last. They're going to crack both sides of my jaw. I mean, they're going to crack it in half. They're going to pull out my bottom jaw and I'm going to have my mouth wide shut for three months, roughly. Mitchell was born with hemifacial microsomia, a condition that affects his ability to talk, breathe, and even eat. I was born without a left mandible, left bottom mandible. Um, I have a narrow windpipe. I have a shorter than normal tongue. I have many dental problems. I was born with an extra ear hole on my right side. Last summer, my sixth surgery, I had a device, I had a device put into my um, jawbone to, um, it, was a, it was kind of like a screw sticking out of my face. And then what they did was every day my dad had to crank it a millimeter so my bottom jaw would come out. And then so the last surgery over winter break, they removed the device. So now it's not there anymore. Despite these apparent setbacks, Mitchell has not allowed it to affect him. My grandpa always told me that I was really happy. I don't know why. I was just a very joyful child. I watched a lot of movies, and the way they act in the movies was kind of the way I act in real life. And I only watched like Disney movies, so I was a very uncontrollably happy child. But when adults saw me, they, they like felt sorry for me. But I mean, I'm, I've never felt sorry for myself, really. Instead of despairing, Mitchell focused on his work in film. In the beginning, he was in front of the camera. His mom signed him up when he was three and soon he was performing on the stage at Ala Moana, Kahala Mall, and at company parties. He even got an award from the mayor. In sixth grade, Mitchell took his first film class and realized he preferred being behind the camera instead of in front. When Iolani offered a film class this year, Mitchell signed up immediately. He posts his projects on his YouTube channel and plans on entering the Iolani Film Festival where his videos will be shown to the entire school. Many of them star his good friends. Mitchell's a hard worker. He's really caring and he's really generous when he wants to be. <laughs> Though he's not sure where his love of filmmaking will take him, he is sure why he loves it so much. I'm going to quote Steven Spielberg on this. He said that film is a way for the director to see what he wants to see. So the way I want to see life, I can make it in a video or the way I want others to see life, I can shoot it in a story. And that's what I love about film is that I can make it 
anything I want. Like, I have full control of that life. That, that universe is mine. This is David Pang from Iolani School for Hiki No. <laughs> Welcome back to the grassy hills of Parker Ranch in Waimea on the island of Hawaii. Parker Ranch was founded in 1847 by John Palmer Parker and spreads across 130,000 acres of the island, making it one of the oldest and largest cattle ranches in the United States. Now the ranch continues to play a large role in the community with new and diverse industries in development. The ranch is looking at Waimea's potential for renewable energy and has started work on an integrated energy resource plan. The Parker Ranch Foundation, created by the late Richard Smart, a sixth generation Parker descendant, supports four Waimea beneficiaries, the North Hawaii Community Hospital, Hawaii Community Foundation, Hawaii Preparatory Academy, and the Parker School Trust Corporation. In 1943, Waimea had a population of about 400 residents until the arrival of 25,000 U.S. Marines. The wounded and ill troops came from the Gilbert Islands and Tarawa Atoll, where they were victorious in the Battle of Tarawa. As the troops recovered, they began performing training exercises and started to improve the small town. They provided electricity to the town with an electric generator and built reservoirs to supply water. The troops left in January 1945 to fight in the Battle of Iwo Jima, one of the most decisive and bloodiest battles of World War II, where they were victorious. The camp was dismantled from 1946 to 1947. This monument was constructed to honor the importance of the camp and those who trained here. Our next story takes us to Oahu, where students from Eva Makai Middle School introduce us to an instructor who uses butterflies to teach values. Ms. Deborah Grocross is a 7th grade science teacher at Eva Makai Middle School. During lunch and after school, she hosts his Butterfly Club, a club dedicated to educating students about the delicate life cycle of a butterfly. While some people think it might be a waste of time to talk about butterflies, Ms. Grocross feels the creatures have a big value in the bigger picture of society. Butterflies are gentle and delicate, and it's, it's a lot of fun to work with them. And I find that seventh grade students don't have so much compassion for animals. So I thought by having a butterfly club and by students working with the butterflies that they'll learn to be more compassionate. And if we have compassionate students, hopefully we'll have compassionate adults. I like Butterfly Club because you get to help raise butterflies and when they grow up to be in the butterfly house, they usually land on you and you feel like you've accomplished something in your life. Miss Goldcross's love of science didn't happen in a school science period. In fact, she found science pretty boring during her school years. However, it started with a simple capping trip. My father used to take me out into nature, he used to take me camping, and one of the best experiences I ever had when I was in right around seventh grade was we were camping and I had gone out on a hike and next to this great big lake there were hundreds of butterflies and I, I had never seen that before. And so I went back and I got my father and I said, you know, what, what's this all about? So he came out and he looked at it and he had me get down with the butterflies on their same level and he said what are they doing and sure enough I could see that they were actually drinking the water and I said really butterflies land to drink the water and he said well these butterflies are on a migration and they've been flying for a long time and they need to stop and rest and drink water and so that's what they're doing because we could go we could walk right up to the butterflies and none of them moved and there were hundreds of them and so it was really interesting. It was very good, actually, for my father to sit me down and just watch the butterflies and not touch them or anything. Miss Goldcross's experience that day grew into something greater than just science. It grew into an idea that Goldcross practices as an educator and person in life. Compassion is going to build better students and better adults. I feel that. Um, as we grow older, if we have compassion in our lives now, that we'll understand in, as an adult with um, laws and the government, with wars, with um, people that need help. If you have compassion in your soul and you feel a need to, to help people, it'll just make the world a better place to live. Ms. Goldcross's Butterfly Club has mixed her own love of science and care for animals. Her desire to make this world a better place happens one butterfly at a time. This is Hana Gando from Eva Makai Middle School for Hikino. We're back on a tour of Waimea, and we're lucky today. There's snow on Mauna Kea. 
Mauna Kea is the highest island mountain in the world, rising 32,000 feet from ocean floor to an altitude of 13,796 feet above sea level, which places its summit above 40% of the Earth's atmosphere. Located on the island of Hawaii, the summit of Mauna Kea hosts the world's largest astronomical observatory. Currently, there are 13 telescopes near the summit. Nine of the telescopes are used for optical and infrared astronomy. Three of them are used for sub-millimeter wavelength astronomy, and one is used for radio astronomy. We take you now to the windward side of Oahu, where students at Kalaheo High School introduce us to a young woman who is doing her best to deal with a learning disability called dyslexia. School is hard enough. Keeping track of notes, work, and grades is already a challenge. But for Julie Eustachio, another factor has added even more of a burden. I was diagnosed with dyslexia in seventh grade. Dyslexia is a learning disability characterized by difficulty in developing reading and writing skills. They struggle with making connections between written letters or combinations of letters that make words. Dyslexia causes letters and numbers to be constantly switched in the reader's mind. According to DyslexicHealth.com, dyslexia is the most common learning disability, affecting nearly 20% of the student age population, one out of every five students. But Julie is much more than just a number. As a young child, dyslexia greatly affected her early education. And the indications were I was struggling in my schoolwork and my teachers and parents realized it. For Julie, getting help was the first step in dealing with her disability. My parents hired multiple tutors to help me with my struggle with my homework. And in 7th and 8th grade, I had two separate tutors for math and science. And they worked with me every day after school to help me with my work and tests. Dyslexia not only takes an academic toll on students, but even an emotional one. Students with dyslexia sometimes equate not being able to read with uh, something being wrong with them. And sometimes some of them equate it with being less than, less than smart, when really, Many dyslexics, I've come to know, are very bright. Even though dyslexia has burdened Julie's life, her amazing group of friends, family, and instructors will continue to help her make the grade. My family and friends have really supported me throughout the years, and a lot of my friends have dyslexia too, so we all help each other out. And my parents help me as much as they can. My advice for kids with dyslexia is never to get discouraged by how much you're struggling because it, it really doesn't matter. There's other kids just like you and teachers will always help you and your friends will always support you. This is Carson Chu from Kalaheo High School for Hikino. We're back on our tour of Waimea Town on the island of Hawaii. I'm here at the Miche Rosales Farm in Lalamilo Farm Lots. This area is well known for agriculture, especially for the tomatoes, lettuce, cabbage, and strawberries. Lalamilo Farm Lots is also home to Tropical Dreams Ice Cream and the Lalamilo Wind Farm. The farming and ranching that goes on in this agricultural area has defined Waimea for generations and continues to do so today. Our next story comes from Central Oahu, where students from Waipahu Intermediate School introduce us to a plantation village docent who lends her life experience to her tours. Ever wanted to explore the plantation life in Hawaii? Well, here in Waipahu, there is a Hawaii's Plantation Village. The Hawaii's Plantation Village is an outdoor history museum that tells the story of the sugar plantations from 1850 through 1950. This location allows Keiki, family, and all ages to explore a living history museum and a botanical garden. The plantation includes restored buildings and replicas of plantation structures such as houses of various ethnic groups and community buildings. The plantation's historical importance isn't what only makes this museum interesting, but it's also the personal experiences the tour guides there are able to share. Grandma SP, a former plantation worker of Filipino descent, gives a very special tour. It's been my life and when I take people on tour, they have brochures to read but I concentrate on telling them about my life as a plantation laborer's daughter. I lived the life, so I wanted to, get, to have people know the feel and how I was raised in a plantation. She loves to incorporate her own experience 
working in the plantation at that time and to the tour she gives. It's so different now because families are not as close-knit as we were because we had just our neighbors and us, we became family, we shared everything we had and now people just have no feelings for one another, there's no sharing or caring for one another. another. It's been a selfish world and it's no outsiders outside of their own immediate families. Mm -hmm. If Grandma Espy had the choice of reliving the plantation life, she would definitely take it. I think I would because there was no fear of having your house locked, your car doors locked. And it was, you could just go from house to house and neighbors can be there night or day. And there was no fear that somebody out there was going to harm you or be on drugs. It was so different then. He is worried that the legacy from those days might be forgotten. Well, we have this Hawaii plantation village, and it's a legacy now, and it's going down the drain if people don't come and really realize that this was what made Hawaii what it is today, of all the different ethnicity that came to come to play, to work in the plantation life. And as long as people like Grandma Espy tell their stories of plantation life, memories of that era will live on. I'm Ernesto Arizala from Waipala Intermediate for He, Ki, No. We're back on our tour here in Ululaau Waimea Nature Park in the heart of Waimea Town on the island of Hawaii. The park covers 10 acres of state-owned land and is leased by the Waimea Outdoor Circle for environmental research, education, and restoration. Their plan is to remove invasive or noxious plants and replace them with endangered and threatened species. They also intend to provide long-term maintenance of these plants as well as environmental opportunities for local school groups and the general public. The park is also a great place for picnics, community events, or even just a stroll. We travel now to the island of Kauai, where students from Keikula Ni'ihau o Keikaha Public Charter School tell the story of an arts program that uses native plants to teach students how to see. Over there, which we will pass out to you after my demo. Ma kikua ni o kikaha, he mea nui ka pili loihi me kauhana o ka poe pinaki o ka waine. Nō nā makaiki, he umia oi kukua nui ka Garden Island Arts Council i ka māku mau haumana ma ka pahana Van Gogh. We've been working with Kekula Niihao on this Van Gogh project, and each year we have a different project. This year we have a project called Native Hawaiian Plants. Haunani, the principal one, is to um, I nā haumana e loa ketahi i te mata ana i talakohana. Tutulu ana a me katahati i ana, he mau wai wai te i ana lako. Aia, pa a me lako, tau a tau. A makau tau lako no nā mea apau. I nā loa a me ite i a lako, te ia ite mata ana. Hiti a oe te ite i tā lako hana o kalā. A ohe poe e hoi hope ana. Holo mua nā lako. No ka mea, loa a kuri a lako te ite mata ana to lako kulana. Te haalele au, a ohe poe i hiti te lawe i te ia ite mata ana mai a lako. Tau palena te ia ite me lako. No laila, pono te ia ite mai loko o tana au. A ole hiti ia u te taha ti i nā lako. Nā lako no e taha i te ia ti. Loa i nā hauma nā to lako kulana pono i. A kā, pono e hana mai ta kulana ti e ti e. A ole pono e hana me taha aha. Tau oi hana. E ho'o ulu ya lako, e hana i tamai ta i loa, e hiti ana ya lako. Nā nā lako i ta lako ti i mua. Ah, a ole mai ta i. Hana hou, a hana hou i ka ti e koru. A me no lako te ia kule ana, e ho'o mau ai. I nā loa ya lako. What's the improvement that's coming out of them? They'll leave me behind, that's good. Heaha ke tai mea i ao ia i ao e mā tea papa. I nā ni nini lili o e i tawai, hoa hui me ke tai pena a hoa tāmaruna tau tii e a pahuana tau tii. Ke tai mea au i ao ia ai e pili ana i tapena ana a ole ho kai wale no o mā o mā o mā tahu nuane. 
Mai ke kulo ni o ke ka, o vono, o ke ke alo, o kokulo, o koelo li, no hiki no PPS Hawaii. We're back on our tour of Waimea on the island of Hawaii. I'm here at Puako, an important coral reef environment and an area also known for its many Hawaiian petroglyph fields. Puako is a foraging area for juvenile and subadult honu, or green turtles, which spend time here until they mature. Students from Hawaii Preparatory Academy often come to Puako to tag and conduct health assessments on the honu as part of our sea turtle research program in partnership with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA. Remember, all sea turtles in Hawaii are protected under the Endangered Species Act and wildlife laws of the state of Hawaii. Our final story comes from central Oahu, where students at Kapolei High School show how they transferred a World War II photo exhibit from the USS Missouri to their school library. Images can be very powerful. They can capture historic moments in time, which become reality for those of us too young to remember events in history. For others, it refreshes their memory of events that greatly impact society. Children with soldiers, like young teenage soldiers, who were hurt during this fighting process. Students of Kapolei High's History Club got a glimpse of rare photographs of World War II and were given the task of showcasing the images of World's End at the Kapolei Public Library. The images at War's End exhibit are images from the National Archives collection that are not your standard World War II image. They're not, uh, not the images printed in every textbook. They're the personal images. Uh, a lot of them were from guys' individual cameras or photographers who were discovered after the war. The project started with a school-wide field trip to visit the exhibit's home, the USS Missouri. World War II came to an end on her decks, and that was Sunday morning, September 2nd, 1945. It took place right underneath that white tarp. After a quick history lesson, it was time to go beneath the deck to check out the exhibit and be submerged into the history of the event itself. This is the first time we've decided to integrate our existing exhibits and take them, take them elsewhere. We've done presentations at libraries before, but taking a complete exhibit and having the students help us out with that, it's all new. Realizing that very key historical figures, historical people most likely, went throughout these the, the decks and the surface of the ship and they they made history on this. After visiting the Missouri, students began production of their vision of the exhibit, starting off with the selection of images to be displayed. I feel like we should keep this one because it's from oil. They were local photos, so they would affect the people who would be seeing the exhibition more strongly. So it's between this one and that one? Yeah. The debates they had, uh, I just had to sit back and observe. You know, don't get involved, let them work it out. A lot of our population is Filipino too. It was really difficult and frustrating because they were all really good photos with good historical significance and it's hard to like choose which ones were least important because they're all important. I had my own ideas but in the end this was supposed to be a student driven project. This is showing that they're are waiting you, for the more. It? it was fun to observe. After some discussion and difficult decisions, it was time to head over to the wood shop for construction and manual labor. The experience that, that we wanted the kids to be able to get out of this was, it wasn't just painting and construction and, or even just the photo selection. Hopefully we're exposing the kids to different career options, different school options, and we're just trying to provide as much experience as, they, as we can. If they do happen, we'll scrape them off. Most students come in here and think they can't do things. They, you know, they, they don't feel comfortable, and in a few short minutes, uh, we show them how things go together, how things happen, and uh, before or not, they're feeling comfortable, they're doing a nice job. They have the, the reward of doing something and stepping back and looking, oh, wow, that's nice, I did that. that that, it's, a, it's a good feeling, and it's nice to share that with students. Finally, the day of the unveiling had come, and all the students' hard work was now displayed for the public. This remained, from the very beginning through the end, a student activity, and it was just fantastic. Well, I'm just happy that I was able to contribute to something that people can now look at and observe and learn more about the ship as I did. I think I'm, I have become a better teacher as a result of this project. As a teacher, if you're ever presented with an opportunity to take your classroom outside, 
take the learning outside, uh, make it hands-on, then uh, you take advantage of it. Old images were revisited and new images were created. For Hikino and Kapolei High School, I'm Irish Alvarez. We're back on Hawaii Island for our tour of Waimea. The Pu'u Kohola Heiau, located just north of the world-famous Kohala Coast Resorts, overlooks Kauai High Harbor and is known as one of our country's crown jewels and national treasures. Pu'u Kohola Heiau is believed to be one of the last sacred structures built in the Hawaiian Islands before Western influence. Constructed by Kamehameha the Great from 1790 to 1791, the 224 by 100 foot structure, surrounded by 16 by 20 foot high walls, played a crucial role in the unification of the Hawaiian Islands. This massive stone temple was a result of a prophecy that came through a priest named Kapua Kahi and was dedicated to the war god Kukaili Moku and Kamehameha's efforts to strengthen the bond between the islands. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode of Hiki No. Remember, all of these stories were written, shot, and edited by students like us. We hope you've enjoyed watching them just as much as we've enjoyed sharing them with you. Make sure to tune in to next week's episode for more proof that Hawaii students hiki know. To close the show, we'd like to send a special message to an HPA alum, Max Unger. Hiki know. Can do. Broadcasts of Hiki No are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. And HMSA, helping Hawaii's youth and their families stay healthy today, tomorrow, and for generations to come. HMSA, trusted for generations.